Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling to order this meeting of Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. We have regrets from Councillor Sandhu, who is on uh, maternity leave. And uh, Councillor, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, there are none. Uh, would two of us please move and second uh, Committee of the Whole? Councillor Chisholm and Councillor Lischina, all in favor? That's carried. We're now in the relatively relaxed um, rule context of our Committee of the Whole, which we use for planning meetings to facilitate input from the public. Council, the first uh, agenda items are the two consent items. Is there any discussion on those? And if not, is there a mover? Councilor O'Meara moves the two consent items. May I put the vote? All in favor? Thank you. The consent items are adopted. That brings us to our first public hearing item, and this is the public meeting report of the official plan amendment for zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision for Vogue Wycliffe at 3171 Lakeshore Road West. Uh, we're going to have a presentation from the senior planner, Robert Thun. We have listed delegations, and we'll poll the audience for anyone else who has any, anything to offer. The, the purpose of this session on this file tonight is to gather input, not to make a decision. The decision will be made at a future council meeting after planning staff have had an opportunity to consider carefully the, uh, the uh, submissions received tonight from council members and from, public, uh, from the members of the public. So with that, uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, Mr. Thun and uh, we look forward to your presentation, Mr. Thun. Uh, thank you, Mayor Burton and members of council. As you had mentioned, tonight before uh, council and the public, we have an official plan amendment, we have a zoning bylaw amendment, and a draft plan of subdivision application for 3171 Lakeshore Road West. And it's in support of a development comprising of 35 residential units. The report can be found on page 23 of tonight's agenda. And once again, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to introduce the application to council and the public and to obtain any further comments related to this application. Uh, just briefly from a locational perspective, the air photo on the site identify or the air photo on the screen identifies the site and its contacts with the surrounding area. The subject property is located on the north side of Lakeshore Road West, immediately west of West Street. Uh, the site is being used or has been used as a garden center, as can be seen from the air photo. Uh, residential uses uh, surround the site. Victoria Street has two stretches. Uh, there's one stretch on the west side of the subject property and it terminates in this location. There's also a second section of West Street, or sorry, of Victoria Street that ends at West Street in this location. So it abuts the, both the east and the west property boundaries. So specifically, this slide illustrates the development and it includes the following. The extension of Victoria Street, the west section of it, into a cul-de-sac. It also uses a future condominium road internal to the site. There are eight three-story condominium semi-detached units along the northerly property abutting Ward Court properties, and that's identified by the yellow arrow. There are 24 condominium, three-story condominium uh, townhouse units shown by the red star. 14 of these are going to front onto Lakeshore Road West with the parking in the rear off the condomin future condominium road. There are also three freehold townhouses shown by the blue arrow uh, off the extension of Victoria Street at the cul-de-sac. The proposal also includes a pedestrian connection to West Street. The proposal itself contains 86 residential parking spaces, that is four for each semi and two for each townhouse unit. And there's also 14 visitors parking spaces uh, distributed throughout the site. This proposal as presented and as submitted reflects a density of 39.77 units per site hectare. That would be in the medium density range. 
Prior to the submission of this proposal, the applicant, the developer, had three public meetings as part of his developer community consultation process. These meetings were held, as I had mentioned, prior to the submission of this application and provided input into the application. From an official plan perspective from Livable Oakville, the property is designated as low density residential. The low density residential designation permits or allows for detached dwelling units, semi-detached dwellings and duplexes with a range of 29 units per site hectare. Just for council and the public's information, the medium density residential designation allows for multiple attached dwelling units, apartments, retirement homes and long-term care homes, but it has a density of 30 to 50 units per site hectare. So from the applicant's perspective, they were proposing an official plan amendment to change the site, as you can see on the screen here, from low density residential to medium density residential, and also include a proviso in the general section of 1131 of the Livable Oakville plan to add semi-detached units as well, following the words may permit. From a zoning perspective, the site is zoned RL8 and RL3-0. The applicant is proposing uh, to rezone the site, as you can see from the proposed mapping here, to an RL8 with special provisions and an RM1, so residential medium one with special provisions. And specifically, the applicant has requested amendments to the following reg regulations. In the RL8, which is the northern part of the property, which reflects the semi-detached units, they were looking for uh, amendments to the minimum lot area, the lot frontage, front yards, interior side yards, maximum number of stories from two to three, maximum height from 10 and a half to 12, maximum floor area for the semis, and also the minimum landscaped area. In addition, to the south side of the cul-de-sac and the townhouses, the RM1 zone, they were looking for amendments to the minimum lot area, lot frontage, the front yard, flankage yard, and rear yard. In addition, from a unit design, they were looking for relief for porch projections and setbacks from the private garage. These can all be found in appendix A2 to the zoning, uh, to the staff report tonight. Uh, it should be noted though that the lot area and the lot frontages for semis are calculated a little bit different. They are based on the lot itself of where the two joining units would be. Uh, similarly, the townhouse uh, units for the RM1 would be based on the block also created by the townhouse as an example in this area here. But the lot area would be based on the dwelling. So there is a slight difference between the uh, RL8, the semis, and the townhouses. From a draft plan of subdivision perspective, the slide shows you what the draft plan uh, includes. The extension of Victoria Street in the cul-de-sac. It has three blocks. One block is for freehold street townhouses. That's block one. Block two is a condominium uh, townhouses and the semi-detached. There's 32 of those. And then there's a small little block uh, on the south side of Victoria Street that is non-developable. It would be landscaping. So from the staff's review of the application, these are the matters that, that are to be addressed. It's not the only list. Uh, the technical review is continuing on this, but these are uh, matters that traditionally get uh, reviewed and they include consistency with uh, planning legislation, the Livable Oakville residential, residential intensification uh, criteria, uh, the use of the private road versus public streets, distribution of traffic, urban design matters. So these are just some of the ones that we have uh, highlighted in the staff report. Uh, council tonight would have received uh, the staff report Appendix C, which contains public comments that we received to date from the general public. Okay, council also probably has a package in front of them with additional comments that are received since the publishing of the staff report. 
All these comments together with tonight's comments from the public and council will be addressed at a future recommendation meeting. Uh, just quickly, this slide here, I had took the opportunity today just to highlight some of the concerns and comments that were made through the submissions that were received uh, throughout the process. As, I, as you can see, those include transportation comments, they include character, they include access, and then uh, fencing, those are just to name a few. So these are some of the comments that counts, or the uh, general public had submitted to us that will be reviewed and addressed as part of that uh, future recommendation. And in conclusion, Your Worship, we have put together this, uh, or for this recommendation for your consideration. And once again, the additional comments received and the comments raised tonight will form part of the record. So those will be addressed. Uh, these comments will be discussed in the future recommendation meeting and staff have not determined a date on the return, but that will be based on the review of all the comments to date. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Mr. Thun, for quite a good tour of a very ambitious uh, application. Council, do you have questions for Mr. Thun? Councilor Romero. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thun, for coming in. Um, can you just go back to the slide with the other, um, yeah, those ones, nope, sorry, forward. There you go, that one, that's great. I just wanna make sure I'm not duplicating. So um, was it staff's, um, is it staff's direction then that they will be following up with these uh, for the recommendation report that are outlined in front of us here? Or these this is just what you've these comments, Through you, Your Worship, these comments were raised by the general public. Those comments will be addressed in the staff report uh, along with the comments received tonight and the comments that we had through our technical review process. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, now, and my apologies, maybe for you or for our Director of Transportation, if they're here, a lot of the concerns and comments and questions I've heard relate to traffic and to uh, roadways and intersections. Um, in the traffic report on page nine, it states that it's also noted that public pedestrian access will be provided through the site, thereby decreasing the walking distance. I'm wondering what mechanism we have that will ensure that future condo boards do not close that off. What, what, what tools do we have that we can ensure that, uh, and not just the one private uh, uh, walkway here that's closer to Lakeshore, but depending on where we go with the road, mm -hmm. that there would be access that goes right through to Victoria Street from a pedestrian or a cycling uh, avenue. What's, what sort of tools do we have to ensure that that remains that way? Through you, your worship to Councillor O'Meara, uh, we have on occasion used public access easements through the site to ensure that there is a pedestrian connection, as in this case here, would be from one stretch of Victoria Street to the other stretch of Victoria Street. So that would be something we could investigate We then? can explore that, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, just a question about the shared trees along the property line. How, yes. how do we go about um, dealing with shared trees when they come close? I know that some of the residents on Ward Court uh, have some shared trees along that tree line. How do we decipher who owns a tree when it's on a tree line? The trees at the, in this location here is an example. Mm -hmm. Depending on where the trunk is and the roots and the curve into the grade would determine where the boundary tree would be. We do have a forester on staff could, that could determine that. And if they are deemed as being boundary trees, anything that de to deal with those trees would have to be dealt with both the developer and the landowner to the north on uh, Ward Court. Okay, thanks. So um, it's, a, it's a mutual exercise. A mutual, okay. That makes me nervous. But <laughs> um, one of the conversations we had when, when the original um, application came in with the driveways fronting on Lakeshore Road was the loss of the town trees there or, or the, the difficulties in going around those town trees. Um, and I think it speaks to the level with which our community wants to maintain as many trees as possible. So could we just added emphasis, make sure that we work with the developer so that not a single tree that doesn't need to be moved uh, um, is moved. And, and also, what sort of canopy are we looking at when the project's all finished? Uh, through your worship to Councillor O'Meara, at a minimum, we'll be looking at 20%, which is a standard that the town uses through the site plan process. In this case here, it may be more, depending on how the uh, road lays out, the units lay out, how much we can put into rear yard, front yards, uh, protection of the boundary trees and the trees along all the, actually all the property boundaries. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, just in terms of construction, again, some questions have been raised that during the process. Um, do we have the ability to, um, to ensure that, that access and egress while construction 
happens on through Lakeshore Road and not on any of the side streets? Do we have the ability to to put those uh, um, those into into play when when the construction happens? We can review that through the through the engineering process with development engineering and their staff. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, so just in terms of of the intersections, and again, just going back to the the, the traffic um, the traffic report here. Uh, I'm wondering maybe if somebody can uh, just explain a little bit about LOS and how we, we rate intersections. It might, might not be you. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have anybody from development engineer here. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, transportation isn't here tonight, but we can certainly take the question back and provide that in the follow-up report. Okay, well, then I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way then. If, if we can just um, explain sort of how we... We gauge it, and and also how we came up with the numbers. <clears throat> Again, sort on on page seven, we, we talk about seventy five percent of the traffic will be going to the east, twenty percent to the west, and five percent to the north. Um, when we break that down between twenty four to twenty seven trips a day, we're talking about about two cars uh, a day heading north up Spaceside. And I know a lot of residents uh, here are and they've signed a petition. They have concerns about the volume of traffic. So if we could ensure that we have a frank discussion about what the levels and how we got the data and, the, and or sorry, how the consultant got the data for the traffic report and then how we interpret and validate that data and ensure that, you know, it's, we're, we're not, hopefully we're not going to be building a 401 on Victoria Street, but we're talking about uh, uh, what, what the masses are that we're talking about. And I think that's uh, it for me, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor O'Meara. <coughs> Councillor Lashina. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, since there's so many residents here this evening, Happy New Year to everyone. Since our first opportunity to be here, Mr. Thung, you had mentioned that uh, the town discourages private roads. Could you comment further on that? Yes, the Liverpool Oakville plan discourages private roads where they're not warranted. So there's a specific policy that we have to review through each development application to determine if an application is worthy of having a private road, in this case, the private condominium road, or there's a public need for a public road. So it deals with transportation, it deals with services, it deals with a number of issues. So, so just to follow up, you, you started letting us know about Victoria going from one end and then Victoria following up on the other side. So currently mm -hmm. there's no entrance on either side of Victoria into this property? Through your worship, that is correct. And so the, um, the developer's only talking about the entrance from the one end of Victoria, nothing about the other side? That is correct. Thank you. Councillor Adams. It's going to work for me. Um, I have two questions for you. Uh, the first is, uh, was touched on by Councillor O'Meara. It has to do with the boundary trees. So am I understanding correctly there are some boundary trees that it's uncertain as to the full ownership of them? The, if I can go to, you'll see through this area right here, there are a number of trees that are either on the subject property or are deemed boundary trees. Those trees are actually being proposed to be protected. They are not to be cut down, damaged and whatnot. Uh, so we will use the town forester and his experience to go out there and have another look at those. Uh, and, you, and you can see from the air photo itself where those trees are in relation to the uh, fence, which is deemed to be the property line subject okay. to. So those ones that are boundary and have some sort of joint ownership with the, the neighbor. It's, it's a dual neighbor. ownership. Dual it's ownership. a dual ownership. responsibility on the protection to it. Um, in what way can the <clears throat> town ensure that if the proposal was to go ahead, that, um, that those trees would be protected, mm -hmm. and if they were damaged, in what way would the town intervene uh, to make the neighbors good, I'll say, with respect to the maintenance of the trees? That's a good question, and I will review that with forestry. Uh, but for the most part, we would be putting up uh, tree protection mechanisms on the subject property. We'd be looking at the grading and the drainage perspective to ensure that they aren't harmed. So normally in a case where there's development happening and there's a tree protection that's meant to happen, and if the tree ends up being injured anyway, we would go after the developer who's done the damage. Yeah. Would that be the case here? It would be the case. Okay. Uh, and then my other question, you, you touched on with respect to the timing of the report coming back. 
you weren't very specific about it. Is there some guideline for mm -hmm. members of the public with respect to when this is likely to come back and when does the clock start ticking with respect to uh, appeal rights kicking in and that sort of thing? Uh, from an appeal rights perspective, they are in their ability to appeal. December 19th was their 120 days per the act presently. Right, okay. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the return, I'd have to review all the comments, make sure that the technical uh, comments that are raised by staff and outside agencies are addressed, and then I'd be able to get a better determination as to when I could bring it back. So it would be a concerted effort of all staff in the planning department to determine that appropriate date. And so it's likely to be in the nearer future rather than the distant future with respect to when it comes back? I would think probably uh, late Q2, Q3, maybe. Okay. So uh, summer-ish. Summer-ish. Thank you very much for that guidance. Councillor Elgar. Okay. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Burton. Um, Rob, thanks for the presentation. I guess when I look at the plan, I'm wondering, did you have a pre-consult pre meeting with the uh, proposed development with the applicants? Yes. Did a question come up as to why would you not use the existing entrance that the garden center had used over the last number of years? Uh, when it comes to the pre-consultation meeting, we would re review the entire application. We provided them with their technical requirements for submission, and it was up to them to decide if they were gonna come through with Lakeshore Road, Victoria Street cul-de-sac, or all the way through. Now, if you go back to your slide, you show where West Street is just south of Lakeshore. It looks like you had, it had actually a pretty good picture there. I thought, yeah, there it is, Joe. That's it. So mm -hmm. that almost looks like you could run West Street, just a little bit north of the Lakeshore, and go straight in the way everybody's used it for years to get to the Garden Center, correct? The existing access to the Garden Center is right there. This is town owned land, it is West Street. There are a number of very mature, important trees on that site that we want protected. Oh, I'm not suggesting we go into our town, I'm just saying that driveway into the, the old Cudmore uh, Center. That is on town property right now. It's on town property? It's on town property. But, and those trees are still living pretty good though. So but we that, wouldn't have to touch those trees in order to put the driveway in there, which is already there. There would have to be a proper road and that right. impact has not been determined. So yeah, which is pretty minor though, I would think, compared to I, the impact that the proposal has going through Victoria, uh, uh, Spy Side and all the other streets. We can, we can take a look at that. I, 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 would, that, I would really appreciate it if we would, because when you start looking at it from a Google Earth and an aerial view, it, it kind of makes a lot of common sense if you're going to do something to have the least impact on a stable neighborhood, even though I know we're still doing... Because <laughs> this is actually, even if it's a stable neighborhood, and yet we're doing an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment too. So we have to do two big things, plus uh, the condominium uh, part. So. Anyway, if okay. we could look at that, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, the other thing on page 34 of the report, and I'm just highlighting because it, it seems to get overlooked all the time. And it says uh, on the last sentence of the financial, the last, uh, last sentence, and uh, this is anticipated to impact the town's ability to assess and ensure the, that growth pays for growth. Well, we've got a report saying that we, the taxpayers of Oakville, are substituting $16.2 million a year to subsidize growth. And I'm wondering whether in other reports coming forward for this term of council, if we can continue to put that in the report so that people are aware and don't forget how much we're subsidizing already. Okay. If you could take that back yeah, too. We'll take that as a direction. And it wouldn't be bad to throw in the 14.1 million that the region, that we, you know, you know, people of the region of Halton are contributing to, of which, you know, the town is 42%, so. Appreciate that. Thanks, Rob. Councillor Chisholm. Thank you, Worship. Uh, just a couple of questions uh, with respect to um, this is a, a mature, <coughs> existing, stable uh, neighborhood, a large neighborhood that's been there, built most of those homes, 70s probably. And now we're dropping in a whole new development. It's a subdivision development in the middle of, of this stable uh, neighborhood. My question is this. 
And I think I'm going to uh, direct it maybe to, to Diane, is with respect to the residential character study, uh, I'd like to know what the status on this, because this is going to have great impact with respect to, and I'm still having concerns about what that means, uh, the character and how that builds in and the transition. That really concerns because we're dropping in a subdivision within a, an existing uh, area. And the other thing is I'm not a big fan of is private roadways. Um, if we're going down this path, can we consider that the private roadways have the same standards with respect to, to the town, with respect to width and curbing and drainage and everything else? I just don't want to get caught um, something that's going to be kind of odd in the middle of a, a stable neighborhood. So this whole residential character um, uh, issue, I'd really like to, uh, to have some due diligence on that because I'm not really convinced what that means at this point in time. Councillor Grant. Uh, thank you, Councillor Elgar caught most of my questions. All righty, Councillor Giddings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, point of order, Your Worship, I didn't get, a, I didn't get an answer for it with respect to the residential character study. Um, I, I'm sorry, I think we understood you to be saying that um, uh, you wanted to see that back in the in the answers to the report, but uh, let's see if uh, the staff have an answer for you. Thank if, you, Your Worship. If that was a question. Thank you. Um, through Your Worship to Councillor Chisholm, the residential character study has been completed, and the next step is to, through the official plan review, review the residential policies, and that is an ongoing study that um, it's continuing on right now, and it's looked at, at the moment, we're looking at some urban design principles, too, and updating the guidelines for the stable residential neighborhoods. And when would that be coming forward to council? I believe the next three, Your Worship, to Councillor Chisholm, I believe the next um, component is scheduled for Q3, Q4 of this year. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Giddings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when Councillor Amara started, uh, you put up the slide talking about, I believe it was identified issues to date, and towards the bottom of the page, there was one that had <clears throat> said application not consistent with community consultation process. Could you give a little more flavor or, or information on that? Through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Giddings, that is actually a comment that was made by the general public in one of their submissions. It's probably a better comment or question to ask them. Staff were not at those consultation processes or meetings. So the difference between what was there versus what the public heard versus what was submitted is probably more of a fair question to ask the general public. Fair enough. I appreciate the clarification. Councillor has a deal. Actually, on that same vein, um, you mentioned that there were three public consultations. Were the same? Um, drawings for the site at each of those consultations or did they change over the course of those three meetings? Through you, Your Worship. Uh, it is my understanding that those evolved from, for different designs. So, so is it fair to say that somebody could have gone to the first... Could, is it fair to say somebody could have gone to the first public consultation seen a, a drawing that had different density and different configurations versus the last, uh, the, the third one? Through you, Your Worship, that is a, that is a possibility. Okay, and, and so when we're considering the comments from the public, how do we know, I mean, sometimes the public is commenting from what they initially heard, not necessarily the, the report. That's still a possibility as well. Well, they probably would have had the background of going to those meetings. The application was circulated out. The application was put on the town's website. Okay. So it's the application that is before council tonight is the one that has substance. It's not the d designs that they had at their consultation process. Right. Things can evolve from that process to what we see today. Okay. So it's what we have before us today that we're actually commenting on. Okay. Um, thank you very much for clarifying. So just, uh, uh, Councillor Robertson is next, but just I think we should add a little bit extra clarity. That process that happens before we see an application is intended to allow applicants to evolve their, their thinking and, and, and respond to public input. <coughs> so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and, and it is the application that's before us, not anything prior. Councillor Robertson. 
Thank you for your report. I know it's very important to the people here in terms of being heard on this. The one thing I did want to ask <coughs> is in terms of the semi-detached dwellings, they right now they are set to be three stories. They're proposed. And three because stories. they are directly attached, they're they're the ones that are direct to the existing. Is there a way for them to come down to two stories so they and then transition to the three story townhouses so that they have a better perception that those semi detached are more in line with theirs? They don't have windows looking down into their property. And so through you, your worship to the councillor, that that is a valid comment that we will take that away and include that as part of our discussions with the developer. Thank you. And in terms of your list that had the overall comment submissions, the very last slide, I think, this one, um, the need for higher boundary fencing. Yes. Is that between the existing neighbors and the subdivision? That comment, I believe, is related to the ward court uh, properties, and they were looking at higher fencing along that. Is that for the duration of the development, or is that after the development is done? That's as part of the development <coughs> being built. So they want it there afterwards? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. I just However, just to clarify, Councillor, uh, through your words, the fencing is not part of the zoning bylaw. We have a fence bylaw that the town implements, so it is through that process where there are variances to the fence heights, they get adjudicated through that process. Is the developer required to build a fence at all? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. That's practically all of us. <clears throat> but we're lining up for seconds. Councillor O'Meara. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Your Worship. I just know that this is the time to get our planning director writing and repeating to us the things we'd like to see. So um, and so just to, to clarify then, Mr. Thun, we'll, we will be talking with the developer and exploring Lakeshore Road access ideas then? Through you, Your Worship, we will. Okay. It's and then, been raised. And, and can we also, I, I was contacted by a couple of residents on what cut through traffic would look like if it was connected. So residents from Mohawk, um, um, Strathcona, all of those sort of roads to the east of the property, if we're able to get in the traffic study counts of and, and forecast vehicles, can we get some information on forecasts of what cut through traffic might look through look like if we were to connect Victoria as well? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Your Worship. All right. Uh, we have two registered delegations. I'd like, uh, before we hear from them, I'd, I'd like to add my small note to the list. Uh, and, and that is if planning could, uh, in their report, discuss why this isn't overdevelopment. Okay. All right. Um, our, our, technically, it is relaxed rules because committee of the whole, but in theory, we're <coughs> not supposed to do all that clapping. <laughs> and, and above all, we're not supposed to interrupt each other. And as long as we stay neighborly, I think we'll be fine. Um, Madam Clerk, would you call the registered delegations, please? Our first registered delegation is Joe Morrow. Welcome, Mr. Morrow. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, Your Worship. Get myself set up here. Your Worship, members of council, staff, my name is Joe Morrow and I'm uh, representing the residents of uh, Ward Court. Uh, they are here with me, uh, my friends and neighbours as well. And we do have some issues related to this particular application. And we did submit a formal letter to the planning department, which I believe is part of 
your package that you've received as far as the information is re regarding this application. So I'm just going to go through a couple of them, highlight a few more things related to that, uh, just to make some emphasis with respect to how important it is to us, some of the issues that are being raised. And some of them have actually been raised by Council already uh, with some of your questions, so we appreciate that. I guess the first point I'd like to make on behalf of our residents is that uh, we think that the bylaws and policies that are currently in place are sufficient for the area and that uh, the, any kind of uh, development should follow what's currently there. We have the livable local plan and we know that it identified areas of growth in this, uh, in this town and our particular neighborhood was not one of those areas and we feel we should be respecting that in, re in relation to the plan that was already developed by staff and by those uh, prior to, uh, to this particular time. The other thing I'd like to raise is that there's plenty of room within the current zoning for an application to go forward and still be within the, the, the structure of the neighborhood and, and, and respect the neighborhood. So we feel that that's really important to follow. I know the question was raised by, um, I believe it was Councillor Chisholm, respecting the character and nature of the, uh, of the neighborhood. And we believe it's very important that that's something that, that we as, as residents felt uh, it was one of the drawing, drawing attractions for us to move where we are. We have people who are living uh, in this neighborhood, some of the original residents when the original de development was uh, put together back in, what, the 70s. We have people who have been there five years. Myself, I've been in the neighborhood 15 years. And it's because of the way this neighborhood has developed and has grown is why it was so attractive to us. We have two storage dwellings across the entire area. This application is looking for three stories, particularly the, the, uh, the properties that are going to abut against our properties on Ward Court. And for us, that really is a disturbance to what we feel is the, the character of our, of our community. We, we have a small community within, within the area. We are very, very um, a social group. We've got street parties happening all over the area. Spaceside does one, we do one. And we feel that bringing this overdevelopment into that area could have an impact on how we feel about where we live. We are also concerned about privacy. Uh, I think the question was raised with respect to uh, the three-story applications for some of these townhouses and, and the semis. Uh, but what's more important is they're also actually, actually asking for an increase in the, uh, the, the heights of the, uh, the, the buildings from 10.5 to 12. And I know it was, it was related to in, in the staff report. Those two things combined are going to put a situation for us as residents where we're going to feel that we are being overlooked in terms of our backyards, in terms of our privacy, and it's really going to be a disturbing element for us in terms of our, our quality of life respect, in respect to our properties. Now, trees. I know it was raised already, and it is very important to us with respect to the canopy. And I know this city is very proud of the fact that we have a very green looking area. When you look at you know, a visual uh, property looking at our property or the city of Oakville versus Burlington or Mississauga, when you do a Google Maps, you know, we're that green area in the middle and you've got these two areas that are very, very developed and we're, we really feel it's important that that be preserved and maintained. And I'm happy to hear what was heard uh, by Mr. Thune in terms of the, re the respect we're going to have for those, those, um, uh, those uh, tree, trees which are on the broad border lines and are, semi or are shared in terms of the ownership. I guess to to end my comments, because I'm not going to be very, I'm being very brief, is we're not against development, but we feel development has to respect what's going on within the local community and must blend into what is already there. And also respect what this town and what the planning departments have done in the past with respect to where growth should happen and how it should happen. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Sir. <laughs> Questions for the gentleman? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the next delegation. The next delegation is Shelley Thornborough, president of the Bronte Village Residents Association. And then she's also going to speak on behalf of Ty Goss. Welcome, Ms. Thornborough. Council looks forward to your presentation. Good evening, Your Worship, members of council, senior members of staff, planners, and all of our community that's here tonight. Thank you very much for the opportunities to speak to you before you tonight. Um, I'm just wondering, do I have the presentation up here?
see some opportunity to All right, thank you very much. So the Bronte Village Residents Association has reviewed this application, considered the current zoning and the issues raised by the community. And in conjunction with all of these, we have um, reviewed the application and do not support the application moving from a low density residential area to a medium density. However, with the special provisions that the uh, developer is also proposing, it actually would increase the medium density um, proposals that are currently on the table. So we've seen that with all of these um, applications within, uh, proposals within the application, it doesn't promote the Livable Oakville Plan, the concept of stable, cohesive, and sustainable residential neighborhoods. And we ask the, count, the council to reject this application in its entirety and to encourage the developer to submit an application that supports the current neighborhood character and zoning, especially given the fact that brought to our attention after three public um, meetings, a lot of the input from the residents was not fully considered, coming from um, 22 dwellings considered originally to an increase of 35. We're going to focus on three areas to consider um, concerning this application, zoning and infrastructure, zoning and intensification, infrastructure and traffic, and impact to the tree canopy. Zoning, use, zoning is a technical uh, tool used for land planning, and we can see from the slides put also by the planner that the subject lands are surrounded by low density, all of which consider a two-story single dwelling um, attachments. The zone, the medium zone uh, density zoning is generally stated for intersections near um, commercial areas or uh, routes to major um, traffic contributors uh, such as the QEW. And we have seen that the um, areas where there is medium density in the area fall along Great Lakes Boulevard and Rebecca Street um, and are certainly not within a uh, current stable residential area. The subject lands are an, a hectare in size and the current zoning, um, if we kept within the current zoning, it would permit 14 two-story detached dwellings. Right now, we see that there is 35 dwellings that are, are proposed, which, is, which would really exceed uh, a growth factor of over 250%. The applicant's proposal is not aligned to section 11.1.9 of the Livable Oakville Plan, which despite zoning and um, intensification accounts for built form, lot pattern, infrastructure, parking and services. The planner here tonight went through a lot of the um, special provisions and zoning that the uh, applicant has applied for. So if we, there's a lot of numbers on the slide right now, but if we take a look and take a step back and look at the application versus the current and the proposed zoning, as much as they're moving away from, if you can see here, R8, from R R RL3-0 and RH to RL8 and RM1, they're also applying for special provisions. And I've outlined what the impact of those special provisions are in the percentage variance. So in some cases, we're almost 80% over the exceeded um, zoning that they are proposing for our area. So in actual fact, we're actually going um, in excess of medium density zoning. So I think that's a very important aspect for members of council and the planning staff to consider, um, given the fact that this is a, um, a, 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 an application of, of uh, quite a large magnitude of intensification for such a stable area. Um, and, that is, and the surrounding area is all considered low density. <coughs> if you look at the, um, the last metric here, the maximum residential floor area will be increased by 150%. Many of the minimum setbacks are going to be increased to over 50%. So this really impedes a lot of intensification in an area which would generally, um, under current zoning, account for only 14 detached dwellings. 
The other point that we want to consider is infrastructure and traffic. This has been brought up by the community as a huge uh, concern. There is only one entry and exit point that is proposed through Victoria Street and is not considering the current um, entry and exit points that exist in the community <coughs> today. It will create more um, traffic for the area in the stable community. And there is a provision that was brought up in the region of Halton's report where they stated, given the current infrastructure, waste and water management is near capacity given our current conditions. An addition of this, application of this nature will put additional pressure on the system and affect our community as a whole. Finally, we want to consider the, tree, the impact to the tree canopy. The arborist report submitted by the de developer seeks to remove 22 of, of the trees on the site, of which only three show signs of EAB or insect infestation. This is a huge impact to uh, the tree canopy in our area, especially when we consider that many of uh, the trees have been affected in our area by EAB originally, so we ask consideration for this. The arborist also indicates in the report that many of the trees are in decline um, despite uh, an assessment made five years ago by an arborist associated with the town of Oakville that they were in good condition, just requiring normal maintenance. So we respectfully ask members of council to consider this and the planning departments, this application in its entirety and reject it and ask the developer to come back with an application that meets the stable structure and character of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thornborough. Are there questions for uh, Ms. Thornborough? Council, this Chinna. Thank you for your presentation, Ms. Thornborough. Just to, to double check, did the BVRA attend any of the three public consultations with the developer? Yes, they did. And you presented this information to them prior as well? The BVRA did not present any information at the public um, consultation meetings. So just based on what you saw yep. there on the The information was presented by the developers. Thank you. Then thank you very much, Ms. Thornbrough. Okay. Um, now, I promised that I would poll the audience as we do. Oh, sorry. Sorry, what? I think oh, I'm sorry. Doubled you to your worship. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Did they say something different? Like that, right? <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, before you begin, uh, <clears throat> to get everybody else ready, it's ideal if you, if you think of something that no one else has thought of, that would be welcome. If it's already been said, you don't need to say it again. It's already been caught. So uh, I hope that helps you organize your thoughts and, uh, and the time we spend together. Ms. Thornborough, I beg your pardon, please proceed. Thank you, Your Worship. Tonight I have the um, honor of representing not only com my community, but as a member in this community affected by this application. I have been before council on many occasions advocating for the community. And tonight I do so on behalf of my husband and myself because we are affected by this application as well. Um, we would like to formally request council reject this proposal. It does not conform to the livable Oakville plan. It seeks to upgrade zoning from low density. It impedes the setbacks beyond the minimums outlined in both low density and medium density zoning. It seeks to increase um, the dwellings from two stories to three stories, um, imposing monolith built form into our neighborhood. It seeks to, rem to remove 22, store, uh, 22 trees from our area, negatively impacting the tree canopy. It disregards the preservation of trees that form the canopy of the area bounding the property adjacent to Ward Court residence. And I, we, I will be pointing out the inaccuracy of the application that depicts the status and the condition of the trees along the property line. In the arborist report, it was noted that only one of the um, sheet of the trees were a boundary tree when in fact the, the, uh, along my property line there are six. The planner made note and he actually brought up the picture that um, points towards the trees that are noted in the, in the arborist report as 908 to 939 which expands the, um, the ward court boundary. And 
Um, I have provided um, photographic evidence to support that. I have six boundary trees abutting this, the, the subject lands. And my neighbors have confirmed tonight that on either side of me together, we have another four to five. So that's 10, probably 10 or 11 in total. The inaccuracy of the Arbor's report puts in question the remainder of the accuracy of the application in total. And it also appears to disregard the adequate need for tree protection zone around the tree canopy um, bordering the subject lines. Now, the planner made mention that there would be mechanisms for tree protection um, during the development. However, when you consider the minimum setbacks um, that, that the, the application has put forward, these are already impeded. And it's clear that the, the setbacks do not conform to what is required for the protection, the full protection of the trees. So for everybody that's here, boundary trees, and I know this was, this was brought up before, <coughs> Um, are outlined by the Ontario Forestry Act, and they are co-owned trees where a portion of the trunk, which is from the root collar to the first branches of the tree cross the property line. And I have an example here of what that looks like, so we can clearly see the root collar would be, um, would be considered here. I can get my pointer to work. And it would go to the line where we would have the first branches. This example is a very good example of what a boundary tree looks like. And there are mechanisms where we input the circumference of the tree and the height to the first branches where it determines the, um, the tree protection zone and the structural root zone. And based on conservative or average estimates, it is clear that we would need at least four meters clearance. The application only provides for 3.5 in the, in the setbacks based on the, the special provisions that they would seek. And this clearly does not ad, uh, adhere to the tree protection zone that is required for the trees in this area. These are the trees that are uh, abutting my property and we have further um, evidence of this through, throughout the three other properties that are, that are in the area. So in conclusion, I would ask that council reject this application in its entirety. It does not conform to our residential sta stable area, and it does seek to impose um, intensification and impact to our tree canopy line. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thornborough. I would I just hope you understand from the introduction of the item that approving or rejecting are not on the table this evening. This is the information yes. gathering session. I do understand. But I take it from your recommendation that, that um, you believe the issues are very severe and, and uh, show-stopping, I think, is a possible expression of that. Is that right? I would agree. Okay, Thank thanks you. Thanks very much. Councillor Elgar has a question for you. Yeah, the question is, are you giving a copy of your presentations to town staff so that councillors can uh, look at them later? Would Sorry? that be possible? Um, yes, I have. Um, I've actually submitted copies to the town clerk, and I have mm -hmm. copies to give to. I was meaning the today. electronic copies. Yeah. I have submitted electronic copies as well today. Electronically. Of both presentations, yes. Okay, so we can get them electronically later. Yep. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I think we. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we've reached the point where we find out if we've missed anything. <laughs> yes, sir. Would you please um, come to the podium, introduce yourself, and. Uh, Perhaps you could uh, share your information with us. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Members of Council, my name is Kurt Franklin. I'm a planner with Westick Consultant. We're the planners for the applicants for the development before you. So I wanted to thank staff for their detailed presentation. I think they've covered the issues exceptionally well. What we wanted to try to do with you tonight is to give you an idea of what we went through with the community in the consultation process. Because this is something that we had recommended to the, uh, the landowners that this is something that would be worthwhile. We met with the commissioner and the director on this before we started the process to try to get a handle on what sort of scope we should provide to it and what sort of issues we should be looking to cover. So I, he did have it up on the screen there. There we are. 
you are seeing now the, the opening screen uh, from our very first meeting. So what we tried to do was to take the community through a set of guiding principles which we had come up with in after discussions with town staff through the pre-consultation meeting and through other processes, looking at what were the basic ideas that we were trying to respect and use as guidance as we went through this process. First one being, what we're looking for here is modest intensification. This is not a site where you're gonna put a 35-story condo. Um, this is something that we have to look at to respect the neighborhood, has to reflect the character of the area, However, it can also be something that is slightly different. Compatible does not necessarily have to mean the same. We were looking for diverse housing choices so that people could look at other than large lot, single family dwelling, some other alternatives. Uh, built form that took advantage of the whole of the site because this is one of the last you know, reasonably sized parcels in the, this area of Brondy. And I can say that with experience because my first house was actually on board court. We were trying to respect Lakeshore Road West as a scenic road. This is something you've specifically mentioned in your official plan and needed to be looked at very, very carefully. And also the introduction and or enhancement of the existing green buffer along the West Road right of way. So we took them through then just a look at the whole area as pointed out by staff. It's surrounded mainly by low rise residential with one uh, medium density townhouse development just a little further to the east on the south side of Lakeshore Road. Um, the public walkway identified as number two there is actually the West Street right of way, which was in your official plan initially as a public road that has not been open as a public road. It's been kept right now as uh, recreational uses. We showed them, this is the original plan that was submitted back in 2017 where we looked at a very standard, put the road through, how many single family dwellings could we put on here? And we came up with 22 houses. This was an application that was actually submitted in uh, late in 2017 and then the landowners decided to withdraw it because they didn't think it was the best use of the site. They wanted then to think about it, took another you know, almost a year to us to work our way through some of those issues and we then kept on moving forward with the process. But that's what a single family dwelling development will look on there. When you look at all of those ho homes where they are, um, you would end up likely losing more trees than what we're proposing. Um, but that studies would do that. So we then showed them our very first idea, which was a seven story um, condominium development, one with single family homes on uh, the north side back, backing onto Ward Court, and a variation of it with a park on the north court and the road not going through. Needless to say, this was not well received. And um, we were sent back to the drawing board rather unceremoniously. Uh, we went through, so this was a, a massing model that we had done to show it on there. So opinions were very strong. And we went then to, uh, back to the drawing board, we went to a second public consultation, which I won't take you through here because it was essentially a variation on that first plan, which then led to a variation of the abuse that we received for coming back with essentially the same plan. So then we said, okay, we gotta go back and we've gotta rethink the way we're doing this. We're not achieving the results that we're actually looking for. We're not getting the feedback or the input that we want from the community to try and make this something better. So. Our third public consultation in April, we went through the history. So you can see this is not something we've just kind of dropped in and submitted something. This has been a process that we've gone through here with a lot of consultation, a lot of talk, a lot of listening. First thing we hear from the residents is no mid-rise or high-rise buildings. That was very straightforward. Residents on Victoria don't want the road connected. Now, this is, was an issue when the road, of course, was uh, dominated a lot of the discussion in all of the consultation meetings. I cannot stand before you and say that everybody did not want the road to go through. Some did, some didn't. We think it was more of a, we believed it was more of a 50-50 type of thing. And we were informally noticing a correlation that seemed to be the further people lived from Victoria, the more they wanted it to go through. And we discussed issues such as cut through traffic, the effect on the residents, all of that is part of this process. We also told them about saving the trees on Lakeshore Road. That 22 unit uh, single family dwellings has immense impact on Lakeshore Road, no matter how you cut it, in order to try and preserve. Because if you're gonna put a whole series of drivers on Lakeshore, you're gonna have impact in those trees. And this was something that we took both from the residents and from staff as something that would not be entertained here whatsoever, that needed to be addressed. 
We wanted to keep the West Street right of way as a park. We're not proposing that West Street be extended as a row. We're not proposing that Victoria Street be extended as a row. We think the example of the West Street right of way being used in a different manner is consistent with the type of thinking we should be bringing to bear as to whether even Victoria Street has to go through, given that the patterns are already established in the neighborhood. People are concerned with privacy and overlook backing onto Ward Court. Understand that when we have met the minimum rear yard requirements and there's gonna be a lot of discussion as we move through this process on building height. It's not gonna come necessarily from the residents, it'll also come from staff. We look forward to those discussion and improving the applications. And finally, this is not something that we had put up there, this is something that came from the residents, but it's also looking at different housing options. People didn't want necessarily to stay in a large single family lot. They wanted to have an alternative. Some liked the condominium because they thought it was something they could move into. I have a gentleman, I'm sure if I go back into most, I can find who will buy one as soon as I come forward with it. Um, so that was part of what was fueling our uh, creative process here as well. So then we took all of this, oh sorry, my point, one more, the need for additional visitor parking. We heard this from the councillors, visitor parking is a concern. If we're going to be producing a cul-de-sac, um, that is only has limited opportunities for parking on a public street. Therefore, we had to make sure that we accommodated this within the development. If we couldn't do that, we couldn't have the density which we were proposing. So then that led us to presenting this plan to the community. So this, if you, know, if you look at this, and I believe I have the next slide, that's the actual case. So this is the plan that we presented to the residents. You will notice the eight semi-detached units uh, backing onto work court. You will notice the three townhouse units that are uh, terminating the view on the cul-de-sac and the remainder are the uh, street townhouses which are proposed with no driveways onto Lakeshore Road, maintaining some sort of landscape feature along Lakeshore to preserve the character of what's already there. Our, the landowners have uh, publicly committed at the meetings and to staff that they will work with the residents to try to enhance the West Street right of way. So it's no longer a right of way that it can become a really valuable linear park inside the community. Discussions uh, in response to questions from Councillor Amir about uh, the uh, easements. We've had discussions with the staff about having public access easements. This is something that is totally agreeable to us and we think it makes sense that we can actually provide some sort of non-vehicular connection between the west side of Victoria Street and the east side of Victoria Street and to the linear park. So to us, this has always been approached as it's a given. This is something that we have to do in this. It makes sense in this type of development. So when I look at what we presented to the community and I look at what we submitted, the only change here is we were able to realign the townhouses in the interior, so we end up with a full cul-de-sac, so it has two entrances onto the extension of Victoria, sorry, my apologies, whereas we only had one before, and we even managed in the plan that we submitted to find more visitor parking. So this is what we have uh, presented, this is what we prepared our applications on, this is the actual site plan. Um, that is going uh, you know, for further evaluation and we'll eventually come back to you with the recommendation. So the one thing I would like to add is the Victoria Street connection is a critical piece of this whole thing. We have heard and seen, we heard it at the public meetings, we've seen it also again in the comments in the written submissions of people complaining about the traffic. The one thing that we really challenged our traffic consultant, and it's, you know, it's Crozier Engineering, it's a respectable traffic engineering firm, city staff will evaluate it, and if you put that cut through traffic, uh, sorry, the road through connection through, you will have more traffic than if you do this type of solution. So that's the thing that you know, staff are going to have to take a serious look at and see where we go from there. So in essence, that's my time. I can't believe I have seven seconds left. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Let's start over here with Councilor Lischino. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Mr. Franklin. I appreciate uh, uh, sort of the historical of, uh, presentation of this. Uh, so my question, when you say about choice of homes, so we're going to a three-story home, and generally when we're talking about downsizing, there's yeah. mobility issues as one of them. We're going from two-story homes uh, people are usually looking for even a one story. Now, could you make a comment or clarify the, the three story? Is there, I mean, that's quite a bit of walking up the stairs for anybody who does want to downsize and that's generally true. in their older years. 
Yeah, well, the neighborhood is already predominantly two-story buildings. Um, you know, built out parts of it in the you know, 1950s, parts of it in the 1980s. So they, I think the key, the way we took the comment, uh, one, we received it primarily when we were looking at a condominium uh, form of development, which would have had elevators, no yards. Um, in this type of context, it was really trying to reduce the amount of work on the outsides with the lawns. You're in a condominium, it has the maintenance attached to it, those types of issues. So it's not as, I don't think, as strong a comment as it was when we were dealing with the condominium apartment type of form. Um, so that's how it would have worked in here. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Duddick. Thank you, Worship. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, the first uh, design that you had, you had homes going out onto Lakeshore, is that correct? Yes. Yep. And given that you were at one point looking at multiple driveways coming across Lakeshore, I didn't see any of your designs incorporating an entrance or an exit on Lakeshore. And I wonder if you can comment regarding that. Yeah, we, we took the, the, uh, the route seriously in the official plan that this was a scenic road with trees that had to be protected, some of them that were not necessarily in the greatest shape. Mm -hmm. um, our arborist evaluated them and noted uh, in his report, some were healthy, some much less than healthy. So we didn't, uh, when we took this this way, we thought this is the best impact on that street. No driveways. Oh, okay, but I'm talking yeah. a road. Well, I'm a, not road talking is, a road functions much the same as a driveway uh, in terms of that. One so, road yeah. is quite different. I apologize, Your Worship, I'm debating. <laughs> um, there is quite a difference between yes. 11 driveways versus yes. one road yeah. and I can point very easily down the way in our ward where we have two entrances going in to the Fernbrook development right. and it were same scenic <coughs> corridor yeah okay um, I don't buy the the loss of trees yeah. as the issue it's more usually the loss of a unit or a number. We didn't, uh, take truth, Councillor Dutton, we, through you, uh, your worship, we didn't even look at it because we took the, the requirement to preserve Lakeshore as a primary objective of this exercise. So okay. it was not something that I don't even think I could say that we have examined in any sort would of you? detail. We were glad to take a look at it. If we think okay. there's a way to do that and we had to reconfigure the way we were working on <coughs> it, all these options are part of the evaluation process. Okay. The other concern I have um, is, of course, with the abutting properties up against this development and the loss of privacy, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you can appreciate. Are you trying to incorporate any kind of balconies or walkout decks that may, in fact, be at a higher level than people who have an existing two-story? No, we are not. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duddick. No doubt you remember when Mr. Franklin was a member of council and it might have been appropriate to debate him. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Elgar. Kurt, um, yes, what I heard you say is you will be take a look at the, the existing Cudmore driveway into the old garden center. Yeah, As well, we can't option. use that specific, sorry, through your, your worship. We could not use that specific because, as was pointed out, that currently crosses town property. Actually, it's an illegal driveway. Mm, well, okay. <laughs> it, it could be, still be looked at with Yes, that, but if, the if principle of trying to look at an, ex, uh, an access from Lakeshore Road, we can have our traffic consultant take a look at that and see what it would mean to the development, yes. That'd be fantastic. The other thing, would it be possible to overlay your plan when you come back with it, with the new driveway, hopefully, with, with the existing Google Earth, like to the same, so that people can see the existing trees and how your new plan oh, yes. lay out. Yeah, absolutely, we could do that. I, I think that'd be I don't, really Yeah, I don't see that as an issue. Because I'm looking at the at the Google Earth and I look yep. at, at the ward, the street ward, and I'm trying to figure out how far back those townhouses go to those trees that now, so. Yes. I think that'd be really helpful, so thank you. Yeah, as long as you don't want me putting in the trees that we're gonna plant as well. Yeah, but those are <laughs> lollipop trees, you know. Thank you. Uh, Councillor O'Meara. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, thanks for coming, Curtin. We heard a presentation from um, Ms. Thornbury on the, sorry, Thornbury, on uh, the border trees. And it's my understanding that those are all not being touched and protected. Is that That's my understanding as well. And we've committed both in all the public meetings to work with the residents specifically on that issue. That may require some, you know, relocation of a new fence in a slightly different way. Uh, to achieve that, and I've done that in other developments uh, here in Oakville before. 
and that's something that we have on the table here as well. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. Councilor Chisholm. Thank you, Worship. Thanks for the uh, presentation, Mr. Franklin. The issue, too, is what's been uh, identified as the height and um, what's happening here. We're talking stories, mm -hmm. and I think there's an, how people are interpreting what the the measurements of stories are. So can we be very clear on what we're talking about when we're talking meters? Yes. I don't care if it's five stories, but yep. it's based on on height. And I think what the what the presentation uh, and your uh, your um, initial is, I think we're looking at 12 meters. Yes, we're so looking height. at an increase of 1.5 meters over what is currently permitted in the bylaw. Would there be consideration to looking at reducing the, that height uh, because of based on a, a two-story, I think we're looking at probably seven and a half meter height homes in that area is, and the overlook uh, would be a major impact. I and mean, I get back to the character yeah. of the neighborhood. Is there consideration to reducing that? This is an issue that will be looked at as part of the evaluation and we will gladly have that discussion. Um, it's funny, I was actually having a discussion with one of my planners earlier today and you look at the war court development, the development around it, that's old style development where you had the garages out in the front. As soon as we start incorporating garages into the, the buildings themselves, we've increased the height of the buildings <coughs> because of the steps that are involved to get to the living areas. Thank so, you. But this is something we're glad to be looking at as part of the process. All right, thank you. Councillor Noel. Hello, Kurt. Hello, sir. Um, with respect to the parking, I think you just answered the question. So the, uh, the parking units, which are a little more than two per unit, is, yes. are, one's inside, one is uh, within yes. the building envelope? That's correct. Okay. And uh, with respect to the concerns from Ward Court that I heard particularly, and I don't, I'm not sure if the surrounding neighbors have the same feeling about the privacy issue, have you contemplated, uh, or would you contemplate as you're sharpening your pencil to deal with Lakeshore, the potential of creating a transitional uh, two-level homes along that, that strip to this, address? Through your worship, this is something we'll be looking at as part of the technical evaluation. Uh, Mr. Thun has already corralled me and said that we need to have a conversation on some of those issues, and we'll, we'll gladly have that discussion and determine how to move, the best way to move forward here. Also, um, as, you're, as you're using the magic pencil and uh, re -develop or redesigning the potential entrance, um, <clears throat> I, I saw one of the concerns, excuse me, that was uh, on the list of of considerations was the visitor parking issue. I don't, actually, it wasn't a consideration. I think it was uh, one of the letters that was submitted. Yes. Um, and uh, I know that you are, you're slightly over um, the parking requirements from what I, yes, we what are. I read. You, I think it was 96 and you're at 100 or 95 and yeah, you're at 100. We have 14 visitor parking spaces for a 35 unit development, really a 32 because three are up our street. Right, but I think that, I think that we'll, those of us in North Oakville have discovered in particular is that 0.25 visitor parking spot uh, requirement does not meet yeah. the realistic needs of a car dominant society which we live. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering if that's something you could also determine if there's any way to add in any additional visitor parking because it's in reality when you when you look at your your peak holidays you're going to exceed 14 spaces easily. So um, if I can remember be, my numbers correctly, nine are what is required, right. and 14 is what is being provided. So we're already 50%. I know, 50%. Kurt Franklin can do amazing things, so why don't you, uh, <laughs> why don't you see if, if when, you're, when, you're doing some, uh, when you're doing some redrafting, that certainly yeah. is one of the considerations that your, your neighbors are talking about, right. and certainly those of us who experience this on a daily basis, yeah. particularly in North Oakville, where we have mm -hmm. nowhere near the visitor parking spaces we need. And I look directly at... Uh, Councillor Parmar, who uh, this is uh, the bane of her existence, it would be great yeah. if you could consider that as well. We will. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Councillor <coughs> Councillor Hazlitt Deal. Actually, my question's been asked, so I'm fine. Thank great. you. Alrighty then. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Franklin. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Have we have we covered everything? Is the question for the public. <laughs> I'll ask one more time. I'm seeing thumbs up. I think we may have actually covered everything. Um, and uh, I, I see a hand. Can I speak? Yes, you are invited to the podium to identify yourself for the, uh, for the clerk. Actually, I was speaking to this lady here, but. Were you? No, but, but go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> you, you can go first. Hi. My name is Rachel Lee, and I'm a member of this community. I'm a parent in the community, I own a pet, and uh, I'm thinking that we've overlooked talking about um, what this space was originally used for, which is a garden center, 
and how it was a safe haven for a lot of pollinators and it brought a lot of birds to our community. And I'm wondering what's being done to take into consideration the fact that a, a, a condo dwelling isn't necessarily going to have pollinator friendly plants. They're going to have um, more pesticides, I think, because they'll be run by, a, they'll be cared for by a company. Uh, I'm wondering what the roof space is looking like on this development and if there's any way to put natural um, native plants uh, so that there's still <coughs> a space on that property that addresses the needs um, of the winged community that we have. Well, that's a new item for the list. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, ma'am, <laughs> sorry, I was going to the next lady. Thank you for your interest. Please, uh, please come forward and take your turn. And we'd just like you to identify yourself for the your clerk. Your worship, councillors. My name is Sally Yap, and I've lived on Speyside Drive for 37 years. I bought it when they were just building it. It was never said that it would be a, a through fare for traffic. It's a residential street. It has about 24 homes. About 50 cars go up and down. We can barely back out. We have children playing on the streets. And to hear that this developer wants the traffic through that street, like it's going to create chaos. It's going to create accidents. So I am, and most people that live there are highly against them coming from Victoria to Speyside Drive. Okay. Thank you. So thank you very much, ma'am. All right, so that's uh, another angle on the parking issue. Sir? Hi there. We, we welcome the entire family. I brought, I brought some cheat sheets here. So everybody in the room, uh, Michael Mazzatti, I live on Speyside. This is my daughter, Layla. It's past her bedtime. This is my son, Noble. My wife, Colleen, is here as well. Just want to take a quick breath. Everybody in this room looks very similar to one another except for these two. I think we've overlooked the children. And they dream, like she's doing right now, about playing on the street, having fun, having space, have the ability to grow up. And our world is getting tighter and tighter on the kids and what they're able to do, the freedom that they have, the green space that they have. And I just want to make sure that you guys all look at that when you're making your decision. Just consider the children. My earliest memory of Speyside, we moved in six years ago as I was in the driveway where my wife was setting up the inside of the house. I was doing the garage as men do, and I was there for three hours and I didn't hear a single car go by. And I thought, wow, this is going to be the perfect place. Layla hadn't been born yet. So it was really quiet. And there's no chance that only two cars a day are going to use Speyside. People go through the path of least resistance. The cars are going to increase. My kids are going to be out there. I just want to keep them safe. I want to give them the opportunity to play on the street the way I did, the way I'm sure all of you did. So I'd just like you to consider that. Thank you very much. Thank you for raising the point. You're welcome. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> one, I'll make one more call. Anybody else with something we haven't heard yet? All right. We're going to close that down, and uh, we're going to look for a proper resolution um, as printed in the agenda, we have a draft resolution, and uh, a key part of it is is the three uh, part three, which allows us to add issues. The planning director usually does that for us. Um, Mr. Simeone, are you ready? Yes, Your Worship, I am. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've heard a number of issues tonight. I would point out that we did have two slides tonight that had, uh, summarized the issues. In this, from a staff perspective and also those in the, in the minutes, those will be forwarded through. just want to make sure we understood that. And of course, 1118 and 1119 will reside over all of this. But tonight we heard some very specific uh, issues and I'll go over them for, for your information. So how can staff ensure that any public access easements are not taken away by future condo boards? Um, the issue of boundary trees to be further examined in coordination with abutting landowners and how will be the boundary trees be safeguarded throughout the construction process? Uh, Lakeshore Road trees or any trees should not be removed unless absolutely necessary. How can access and egress be controlled during construction to ensure it is confined to existing entrances? 
uh, staff are to report back on how traffic data was collected and a thorough analysis of this will be required at the recommendation report with respect mm -hmm. to traffic matters. Uh, the examination of the impacts of maintaining the existing entrance over town-owned lands on the unopened portion of uh, West Street, specifically any impacts on existing trees. Uh, what is the connection between the application and the residential character study? How can semi-detached dwellings be transitioned from three to two stories to make a more appropriate transition between existing and proposed built form? Uh, looking for traffic counts for cut through streets in the neighborhood on a street by street basis. Planning should include an analysis as to why this isn't overdevelopment. Um, consider the maintenance of one or two existing driveways from Lakeshore to the development. Staff are to examine if additional uh, visitors' parking spaces can be provided as part of the development, and staff are to explore all pollinator friendly options with respect to this proposal. Councillor Chenna. Mr. Samiri, I'm not sure if I heard about the, the going from the three story to two story on ward. Was that thank one you, of them? Thank you, through your, uh, your worship. I, I believe, Councillor, I may have covered it. On, okay. On, how thank can you. the semi detached dwellings be transitioned <coughs> oh, three yes. to two? I think that's it, to make a more appropriate transition between existing and proposed bill form. Mr. Planning Director, I heard two things that I, I'm not entirely sure are planning issues, but I'm not the planner, you are. Um, one was uh, the idea of neighborhood patterns, and the other was the uh, scenic character of Lakeshore Road, uh, uh, which last issue, uh, Mr. Franklin was good enough to uh, name a couple of times and uh, nowhere in all of this have I seen or heard a justification for amending our official plan to go up in terms of yield in you know in response to these planning constraints let me call them why is the logical response to uh, break the official plan instead of live with you know um, bring it down to fit the constraints that's that's what always puzzles me about applications. So if, that, if that's worth covering, I submit it for your consideration. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Councillor O'Meara. Sorry, and I might just add one more thing. It seems like a lot of residents from Space I could probably do with a traffic count on Space Side as well, just to get an understanding of what is currently there and, and what that, that might help as well. If we can add that, that would be great. Yeah, he, he actually, read, the way he read it was every street. Okay, perfect, so, so covered. Thank you. You're going to get double coverage now on Speyside. All right, Councillor Robertson or Councillor O'Meara, would, would you, Councillor Robertson moves the uh, resolution. May I put the vote? All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your uh, time and attention and contributions to the matter. We're going to take a five-minute bio break just so that those of you who don't want to stay with us for the rest of the evening can leave without disrupting the rest of the evening. We are in recess for five minutes. All right, council is now back in session and we turn to the public meeting report for the zoning bylaw amendment from Oakville Urban Core Developments and a presentation from Trish Collingwood, our senior planner. We have no registered delegations, but this like the other matter is a public meeting report designed to surface the issues and uh, inform a recommendation by planning staff later. Uh, Ms. Collingwood, uh, we are all ears. We look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Burton. I do want to point out the error in my report because there was a similar application on this site just over a year and a half ago. The name of the company that owns the property has changed to 1005 Dundas Street East Inc as it is a new property owner. The purpose of this report is to present the zoning bylaw amendment application submitted um, by 1005 Dundas Street Inc. for the subject properties in question at Dundas Street and 8th Line in conjunction with the required statutory public meeting. As noted by my report, there are no decisions to be made at this time and the staff report is to be received by council. The subject lands are located at 1005 and 30 Dundas Street and 3033 8th Line at the northeast corner of Dundas and 8th Line intersection. 
1005 Dundas is vacant and 3033 8th line is occupied by a single detached dwelling. The subject site is 1.09 hectares and has frontage on both Dundas Street and 8th line. This is just going back to the previous application that I was just referring to. So in 2016, an application for an eight-story building with 255 residential units and 20 townhomes was submitted. In 2018, bylaw 2018-108 was approved, facilitating that proposal. And there's an uh, elevation there that you can see what it would have looked like at the corner of uh, Dundas and 8th Line. Also in 2018, OPA 321 was approved and included bonusing provisions into the land use framework of the Dundas Urban Core land use designations. As I said, the property has changed hands and the new owner uh, wished to explore the idea of maximizing the efficiencies of the site and using bonusing to permit additional height. The applicant and staff worked together to permit, uh, sorry, worked together throughout the previous year to discuss and review early concepts for the property. And the applicant held a public information, information meeting um, for the rezoning application on September 11th. There were no members of the public that attended. However, a member of the public that was involved in the previous application resubmitted his concerns um, and a letter regarding this application. Looking at the surrounding context, uh, the site is outlined in red. To the north, there's a detached residential dwelling and uh, the lands are planned for medium, re medium density and residential development up in the north and slightly to the east. Directly um, to the east um, along Dundas, the lands are vacant and designated ur Dundas Urban Core. There's an established residential neighborhood consisting of single detached homes to the south on the other side of Dundas. And to the west is a newly built residential neighborhood consisting of 518 single detached dwellings, semi-detached and townhouse dwellings, as well as a future eight story building on Dundas and um, additional townhouses. The property is located within a very short walking distance to the existing service commercial, retail, restaurants, and various other daily services, as well as transit stops, which I've marked with the T's, for two um, of our Oakville transit routes. The blue circle identifies a 500 meter um, walk. The live work units at Postridge, future commercial on the Minto lands at the, on the east side of uh, Postridge, which is sort of just to the east of number seven, um, uh, transit and several parks are within the 500 meter walk overlay. A little further out between 500 and 1,000 meter walk will get you to the trail systems within the NHS, the Longo's Retail Plaza, as well as the Prince Michael's Plaza and, more, and multiple more parks in the area. The applicant has submitted a zoning bylaw amendment application to facilitate the development for two residential buildings with a maximum height of 12 stories, containing 562 dwelling units and 759 parking spaces located primarily within an underground parking garage. The proposal includes a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units. This is a view of the proposal from the Dundas and 8th line intersection. An amendment to the existing zoning is required to permit the maximum height of 12 stories that is permitted under the North Oakville East Secondary Plan um, through the use of bonusing, a sec, a bonusing in a section 37 agreement, whereas the maximum height uh, was originally approved as eight stories. These, eleva these elevations can be a little difficult to read. However, um, based on this slide that I just showed you, sometimes it's a little difficult to get an idea of how it's going to look from the east and the west. And this is how. Um, this is the, the top elevation is looking from 8th line. And the bottom elevation is looking from the vacant lands to the east.
The North Oakville East Secondary Plan designates the southern part of the subject property as Dundas Urban Core and the northern portion as Neighborhood Center. <coughs> neighborhood Area, sorry. Dundas Street East is identified as a major arterial transit bu uh, corridor, bus corridor, and Eighth Line is designated as a connector transit corridor. The Dundas Urban Core designates and permits a variety of uses with a maximum of eight stories. And as I said, bonusing, if we, it's determined as appropriate, will permit an additional four stories. The North Oakville Master Plan illustrates the conceptual design for the North Oakville East Planning Area. And it shows um, the, the corner of a uh, neighborhood center area, which the intention of that area is to accommodate a range of medium density residential development and limited commercial and civic to serve the neighborhood. Um, this is where the building drops down to five stories at the rear of the property. The site was zoned from existing development to Dundas uh, Urban Core in 2018. The applicant's proposing to use bonusing to facilitate an increase in the height from 8 to 12 stories for the southern portion of the site. The draft proposed bylaw submitted by the applicant, applicant is in keeping with the general intent of bylaw 2018-108 with regards to yard setbacks and parking regulations. A parking rate of 1.35 parking spaces per dwelling unit inclusive of visitor parking was approved with the previous bylaw and the applicant's not proposing to change that rate. Thank you. Sorry, this mouse is touchy. There we go. The following matters have been identified for consideration as part of the complete analysis of the application and from the public, the, the letter that was submitted after the public information meeting. Um, I won't go through all of them. They are listed in my staff report, but uh, you know we were looking for consistency with the provincial and regional um, plans, confirmation of servicing allocation, compliance with the North Oakville um, design guidelines and the livable by design guidelines for tall and mid-rise building. We're looking at scale, massing, interfacing with public realms, shadow impacts, appropriate separation distances to future development. Conformity with North Oakville, um, especially in regard with the implementation of bonusing policies for the lands. Um, identification of appropriate public benefits in exchange for the additional height, should that be determined to be appropriate. Justification for not including a mix of, a mix of land uses in the development of lands, um, including supporting retail uses potentially on the first floor. Uh, demonstrating SWIM. Uh, stormwater management uh, conveyance is still appropriate and um, can be accommodated. Confirmation that the transportation impact analysis is acceptable. Looking at the transportation impacts uh, to 8th line, south of Dundas. Overlook and privacy matters for the residents to the south of Dundas Street East. Justification for the proposed modifications to the parent bylaw um, for, the, for zoning. Uh, we're looking at the parking standard that was approved that is being uh, proposed again uh, versus what the maximum is in um, the North Oakville bylaw. Alignment with the climate emergency uh, declared by council in 2019 and looking at Bill 108 implications to bonusing should um, Bill 108 uh, come into effect and uh, we no longer have the ability to bonus the applicant will be required to submit an official plan amendment if he is still interested in um, achieving the additional four stories. Next steps include further review and analysis as well as consultation with reviewing agencies. In conclusion, staff put forward the following recommendation as shown that comments from the public with respect to the zoning bylaw application by 1005 Dundas Street, Inc be received and that notice of council's decision reflect that any comments received from public will be appropriately addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Collingwood. Uh, it looks like Councillor Adams may have a contribution to your issues list. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the very lengthy issues list. Um, <laughs> as a, a forward to my questions or my additions, I'll say um, I feel like deja vu because we just dealt with this exact property and went through almost the exact same list of issues and now we're back again and so I feel 
uh, disheartened by the fact that we have to go through it again and, and we have this uncertainty for the neighborhood about what's happening on the site. A um, couple of issues to ask you about. Uh, first of all, uh, does the application properly transition to the adjacent lands? And you've caught it partly, I think, in your issues list, but I want to be more specific about the transition to the lower rise uh, format of, of construction that's likely to be around it, and some of it not yet there, but will be eventually, and I guess we don't know yet what the applications are precisely um, on the, I'll call it the, the north side uh, of the property, um, and how that'll function. So that's, that's one issue um, specifically. And then another is with respect to the traffic management, you do have uh, in, the, in the list a transportation impact analysis, um, but specifically, uh, will the traffic management be appropriate for the Dundas and 8th Line intersection uh, area, and so the lead up to the intersection in particular along 8th Line, um, whether that'll function properly. Um, and then I have an issue around the parking, so we discussed the parking and whether the, the parking, including the visitor parking, will be adequate on site, and as a piece to that, will the off-site, will there be off-site parking impacts from the property into the neighborhood adjacent to the area, and will that be um, appropriately managed? Is there is there an impact at all, and if so, is it uh, manageable? And then I've got a question for you about the timing of the recommendation report. I asked the same question um, in our last one. Can you tell me when the appeal process starts on this one or could start on this one, um, and where, where do we land in all of that, and when would when do we expect to see a report coming back to Council? The appeal period ends um, February 11th, night, I believe, so we've, we've got uh, a little bit of time. Um, and sorry, what, through you, Mr. Mayor, or so, what? So the appeal... <laughs> So the appeal date begins February 11th. Yes. So sorry, I said that backwards. The appeal. Yeah. Yes, this. Yes, the the uh, appeal period may begin around February 11th. Okay, and so um, I don't think our next PND is before that. It's the um, 10th. It, oh, is it the 10th? Okay, <laughs> very good. We've got one day, but I'm <laughs> guessing that that means that our report doesn't come back until after that date. Is that likely the case? Councillor, would you turn on your colleague? Turn mine on? I'm being, I'm oh, talking that way and yet my mic is here. Um, and I'm being told that people can't hear me. That's uh, correct. <laughs> I hope this is better. And you should be delighted that somebody would like to hear you. Yes, that's right. Um, and, and so, so the appeal, the appeal date is one day after our next PND, but it sounds like our recommendation report is likely to come after. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, looking at late spring. Late spring, okay. So um, those in the public who are interested in the matter um, will have a little bit more time to consider the issue before it comes back to council. Right, Okay. and I'd like to correct myself, I meant early spring. Early spring, okay. <laughs> and um, uh, Councillor Elgar brought up the issue of the financial impact uh, earlier, and uh, the same thing could apply to page 81 of the agenda on page 15 of the report. Um, and the, the relative impact of uh, development charges and whether we're recouping our full cost or not, and the answer is we don't. Um, and there's a issue that you've caught uh, with respect to the bonusing, and I wonder if you can uh, fully explore the issue on this particular site with respect to uh, the Section 37 and, and how what the impacts are financially. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, and that is something you would like included in the recommendation report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you for your cooperation. Um, Councillor Palmer. Thank you. Um, so I think I heard you mention that uh, we're looking into the privacy matters for the residents that are south of Dundas, but I also want to note that there's residents on Silver Maple Road and George Ryan Avenue, and I just want to make sure we're looking at those as well because those are um, townhouses there. And I, from the picture, it looks like the balconies are facing Eighth Line. Is that correct? So they'll kind of be overlooking into these people's backyards there. Um, so I'm just hoping that's taken into consideration um, because there is a privacy matter there as well. 
Um, and then I just wanted to speak to the parking. Um, Council Adams has already brought it up, but I uh, actually live just um, west of that and in that new subdivision. And I can, I can tell you the parking is not adequate. Um, and if we look at this map, we see future residential, future Dundas Urban Core, there's going to be a lot more development. And I know it says that the applicant does not want to, um, uh, is not considering uh, submitting any changes for parking, but I'm wondering if we are going to be recommending any changes for parking and if that's still possible at this point, um, or <coughs> just taking into consideration how things have panned out in the area um, after all the development that has gone up so far and anticipated development that is to come. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the, um, the issue of parking will be looked at extensively through this application. We're early in the review um, and looking at the issues that are arising from early um, circulation. The parking rate uh, was established in the bylaw as a minimum so there's, uh, we will be looking at whether or not that re should, that requires to be changed. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Elgar. Thank you, through you, Mayor Burden. Um, back to parking just for one minute. Can you help me understand 562 dwelling units, how many visitor parking spots would you expect to have with that many units? I have that through you, Mr. Mayor, one second. So this is their site stats, 141. 141 is what they're proposing. 141 par uh, uh, visitor parking visitor spaces. Parking. And if they were going with the parent bylaw, the parent bylaw is uh, 0 0.2 visitor spaces, which is 112. So they're exceeding what our parent bylaw would require for visitor, they're in keeping with what um, the current site specific on the site so wait, spells so out. What we're saying is, sorry, so we're going to have 562 dwelling units, 141 visitor parking? Yes. Which leaves only 56 other parking spots for people who want to have two cars out of the, fi out of the 562 dwelling units. And these are one, two, and three store, or, uh, bedroom apartments or condos, whatever. There's, yes, the so only 56 people out of the 562 would have an ability to have a second car. Is that correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I didn't get right into that math of um, how I'm many taking, people would uh, be able to have two, but I, I can see where you're going with it. I get 759 minus 562 gives 197. Take yes. off 141, you get 56. Yep. Wow. You are going to look at that, correct? Yes, through I you, Mr. Mayor. You. We will be looking at um, the Ooh. site stats with regards to the parking ratios and what is happening in the surrounding context. Thank you so much. All righty. Anyone else? Councillor has a deal. Um, could you just help me understand um, the, the on page, uh, page 12 of the report, it talks about um, keeping, uh, allowing for minor variance application within the two year period. And they talk about height and um, wouldn't be a factor and the number of units or the parking. What specific minor variance might they want? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, we haven't spoken with the applicant about what variances he's concerned may come up um, through the development. It could be anything from a floor space index to a, a yard setback. Um, you know, we would probably, if this were to even be entertained, you would probably want to make sure it doesn't affect the height. It, it can't come in for height or parking. It strikes me he's already trying to, or he or she's already trying to put an awful lot on the property, giving them, you know, an allowance to go for, for more. Uh, wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, my other question is around public benefit. So I want to tie that question to the climate change. Um, it, do we engage in a discussion with them around a, a public benefit that might um, either provide, have them participate in a district energy plan or do, to go above the building code in terms of the quality of the building um, and emissions? Through you, Mr. Mayor, those are 
great suggestions for inclusions of what we will look at through the review of this application. And once we determine whether bonusing um, is appropriate or not, those I, district energy was tossed around a lot at one time. Um, so we will include that in the list. Okay, thank you for, for consideration. That. My last question is, um, I, I know that urban, uh, there's always an urban review of the, the design. I, I'm, I'm just stepping back and going, uh, do we have a fulsome picture of what this corridor is really going to look like with, with the different architecture that's being proposed? I mean, it, it, it just strikes me that, I, I, especially that one where obviously they didn't put any effort into the elevation, um, it'd be nice to know that there is a sense of fit and theme or look um, on that corridor because otherwise it's just, it's not Oakville. It, it doesn't feel like Oakville and we owe it to the people who want to live there and be a part of our community to build something that's really a, a point of pride. Well, we did incorporate uh, by reference our urban design guidelines so that staff could review the look of applications. So I'm sure they'll look at that. Through you, Mr. Mayor, that is one thing that uh, the urban design staff does look at as they go through is looking at the context and the surrounding area for compatibility, anything that truly stands out. Um, we don't have a lot of uh, architectural control through um, some of our planning policies. However, we do take it seriously. Thank you for that. Simeone, do you have additional items for the resolution that weren't caught already in your report? Thank you, Your Worship. I do, in fact, excuse me. Does this development properly transition to the developments on the abutting lands? Will the traffic management plan properly manage the Dundas and 8th line intersection? Will, the, there, will there be off-site policy parking impacts on the neighborhoods close by? If so, how will this be managed? Can the proposed Section 37 bonusing be dealt with in the final report outlining, amongst other matters, what the proposed benefits would be? And I've heard things like participation in district energy, that, of that nature. Can issues of potential overlook from this development be considered in the final report? Can we look into the provision of additional parking spaces as part of this development? Specifically, we'll be looking at a planning justification report that speaks to the adequacy of parking, sorry, overall. And do we have a fulsome p picture of the design, not only for this site, but this corner and its context? And can staff provide an analysis of this in the final report? Thank you. Councillor Adams, is that a good enough issues list for you to move it? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Can I put the vote? All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Thank you, everybody. And that brings us to our first discussion item of the night. And this is the proposed amendment to the Town of Oakville sign bylaw. And we have a report ready for you from Tony Cordero, from the Municipal Standards, and who is our Municipal Standards Investigator. Welcome, Mr. Cordero. Thank Council you, looks you forward to your presentation. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. I'm here to speak to item number five on tonight's agenda regarding three roof signs located at 24. Regarding three roof signs located at 2474 South Service Road, uh, the current tenant of the building is TD Auto Center uh, with a proposed amendment to the sign bylaw. Request for amendment. In the past, adjustments could only be achieved through uh, one size fits all variances. Uh, since the new sign bylaw came into force on January 1st, 2019, <clears throat> there have been three possible avenues to seek an adjustment. Firstly, an exception, which would be for a minor change to the sign bylaw and granted by a designated official. 
Secondly, an appeal. Uh, this process would be heard by the town's appeal committee. And third, which we are here today for, is an amendment which considers changes to the bylaw that cannot uh, be dealt with through an exception or an appeal process and must be considered a site-specific or sign specification modification to the bylaw, such as prohibited signs, signs not expressed or identified in the signed bylaw, electronic message signs other than ground signs, and or increased in the sign face area of advertised signs. Recommendations are then to be <clears throat> brought forward in the form of a report to Council for consideration. This uh, specific location of 2474 South Service Road West is a building located in an employment land use designate. Uh, all three signs are considered roof signs as they exceed the one meter above the roof line as per the uh, sign bylaw. The property was subject to a sign variance uh, for roof sign in 2004, uh, approved by council at that time. Uh, by then, tenant was Bud Subaru uh, at the property. Again, there's no uh, impact to any tenants. Uh, the property is located uh, well within the uh, service road slash highway, uh, within 100 meters from the QEW. So there is no direct impact uh, to residential properties or residents. So looking at the first sign, um, this one would be located 4.36 meters or 14.3 feet as I still like using feet uh, above the roof line of the building. The, this particular sign application was submitted on June 7th uh, by Zip Signs on behalf of Toronto Dominion Insurance Auto Center. Upon review, staff identified that the proposed signs were, in uh, were not in compliance with the sign bylaw 2018-153 and were over the maximum height allowed over the roof line. As a result, the application was denied on July 3rd, 2019. In order to seek an adjustment, the application requests a site-specific amendment to the bylaw. So on my next two uh, uh, slides, uh, it's going to show sign three and four, and that is because the applicant uh, applied for four signs. Sign two was approved uh, because it, it fell into the um, regulations of the sign bylaw. So as per the drawings, as submitted, you're going to see uh, sign three. Sign three uh, located on the west elevation of the building, and that's approximately 3.2 meters or 10.5 uh, feet above the roof line. <clears throat> And then sign four, uh, located on the south elevation of the building, <clears throat> approximately uh, 3.2, 10.5 uh, meters above the roof line. So the recommendations are that uh, the request for an amendment to the sign bylaw um, from Zip Signs on behalf of TD Insurance Auto Center to permit a roof sign on the north elevation of the build building located at 2474 South Service Road West, extending 4.36 meters above the roof line be approved. I'd like to correct the second one. It should read West Elevation, not again North. So this sign would be uh, approximately 3.2 meters above the roof line be approved. Uh, third, that the request uh, of the TD Insurance Auto Center to permit a roof sign on the South Elevation, again, correction, of the building uh, extending 3.2 meters above the roof line be approved, and that the amended bylaw 2020-003 for signs located at this location of 2474 South Service Road, <clears throat> as detailed in the report from the Municipal Enforcement Services Department dated December 18, 2019, be passed. And I am available for any questions, uh, as well as representatives from Zip Signs and TD uh, Auto Center. Thank you very much, sir, for a perfectly fine presentation. Are there Thank questions you. for the gentleman? <laughs> Councillor Chisholm. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. Just a, a couple of quick questions. The, the variances on these uh, signs, uh, is it um, driven by the, the grading lower uh, to the highway <coughs> and so they can see the TD signs when they're on the highway? Is that the, the, the essence of this application? I, I believe through you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, through you, Councillor, uh, sorry, Councillor, the, uh, 
in 2004, when we saw this building uh, with the towers and uh, Subaru wanted to come in with, with signs on these towers, and that is basically to project over the roof line to get to the vision and the uh, view of the highway and the cell service road. Uh, through you, Your Worship, and maybe you can assist me on this one. Was there at one time with BUDS with respect to the signage on their uh, dealership that was denied by the town? Is it the same, same situation? Can, is there a recollection on that from staff or through you, Your Worship, to staff? It was approved. <laughs> uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. It was approved. <laughs> through you, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, the actual um, request on this property was approved. There was a property that uh, was part of the BUDS group where there was a sign that uh, was subject to legal action, but I don't believe it was this one. I guess my question is: It the same? Is it the same scenario that we're dealing with now? Is the same scenario what happened with Buds uh, down the line? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. No, this this application <coughs> came properly before uh, followed the proper process. Uh, there was a, an application, subsequent denial, and then this application to come uh, to council. Um, if I remember correctly, the previous issue was a result of failing to get permits for a specific type of sign. Councillor Giddings is next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, I'm just looking, the reasoning for this, is it because of the overlook over the QEW, or just wondering if we're gonna be seeing more of this in the future, is it something that is specific to this one area and location, or is it something in the bylaw that we should be looking at? Uh, through you, Your Worship. Um, to answer that question based on uh, restri uh, restrictions in the sign bylaw, the past sign bylaw actually had a two meter uh, restriction above the roof line. So this one is stricter by reducing that by one. So this regulation is any, any sign that is over beyond one meter of a roof becomes a roof sign, which is prohibited. So it, it is more restrictive than Even though past. it's in, but we're looking at its uh, employment land use designation within 100 meters of the Queen Elizabeth. Just wondering if there's some way, I guess for the director, is this something that we should look at in terms of uh, simplifying the process, if there are other signs that are gonna be along that corridor? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, some of the challenge with this is uh, roof signs in general have always been prohibited in the town. Um, there are very few examples. Um, <coughs> I can think of South Service Road uh, East where there's an example. You know, I don't even know what that's still there. It used to be have a, a legal non-conforming roof sign, but generally throughout the town, uh, we haven't allowed them. Uh, we've actually, in, in this case, we've, to create the definition of roof line, we've, we've come up with a definition that makes it um, understandable um, considering the new types of designs we have. So in all likelihood, we will see more of these come forward, um, but to keep the um, continuity we have across the town and not permit roof signs, uh, we think the best process is to come before council um, if, a, if a business wants to um, have this type of sign. Uh, I, ap I appreciate that, I don't disagree. Is a six month time frame about the best we can do on that for the businesses that are involved? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, sorry, a six month time frame. I just noticed that uh, it came through in, I guess, July. Through you, Mr. Mayor, would I, I, I don't know the specifics of this, uh, this application, but in some cases there is back and forth with the applicant, so it's hard to say how much of that time was um, you know, back and how with much us and okay. back and forth. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Councillor Elgar. Thank you. Um, it's, it's, I look at this as if, as long as all the members of council and staff want to start going forward with approving something like this, I don't have a problem, but it's going to set off all along that car strip, nothing but signs above the roof that can be seen from the QEW. Bud's outsmarted everybody by doing a beautiful system of the tower where it's four stories and you have four cars, no signs, but you just happen, might notice the cars if you happen to be driving by. Just east of that, you got Peninsula. Uh, and they're going to, why wouldn't they be allowed, if we allow Subaru, why wouldn't you allow Peninsula and keep going east? I, I'm just concerned that we're just opening up 
a bit of a gate here that we've always stayed away from. Um, I got I got a huge concern of being allowing this one to go unless we allow everybody else to go. So that's all I'm sending back to staff. I think staff, you got to tell us. Do you want them everywhere along QEW? If if you do, then then let's change the bylaw and get it so it's not going to have to come to us every time. But I've got a huge concern with doing this one. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, what I would say in, in uh, response to that is a previous uh, amendment or a, 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 sorry, my terminology is wrong now, a previous appeal, and that's not right, but there was an exemption on this property to allow a roof sign before. And we have actually seen those. Um, it's not uncommon in some of those buildings along um, the, the QEW corridor. So what I would say is, um, we have done it before. This is not likely to set a precedent across town, but it does allow us all to have a look at the requests when they come in and make that decision of, do we want it here or don't we? In, uh, in this case, and I heard a question before about urban design. Urban design also takes a look at these requests, so we get that added benefit of a look as we go forward. So I don't think there's a fear of setting uh, precedents that we can't step back from, but it allows us that second look. Councillor has the deal. Um, so can you help me on page two of the report? It says, Appeals Committee, um, the limitation is as follows, prohibited signs. But based on what you've just talked about, this would have been a prohibited sign. This is a, a regulated sign as long as it complies with the regulation of one meter above roof line. Once it exceeds uh, the one meter, which in this case it has, then it, it has the ability to go through a variance, or in this case, an amendment. And, and, and help me again why, why you wouldn't just change what the appeals committee's authority is to deal with these on a regular basis if they come forward? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when we drafted the bylaw, we thought, um, again, uh, roof signs are, are signs that we, as a community we've always um, stepped back from. We didn't want to allow those. And because of the... Um, um, community-wide impact of them, we wanted, we thought it best to come to full council to have that uh, review of any, any request that came forward. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor O'Meara. I, I was gonna move the report unless there are any other questions, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Knoll. Thank you, uh, uh, quick, two questions. First of all, does this um, sign require an MTO approval as well? That is correct, sir. Uh, it's within 400 meters of the highway, therefore they will need a, an MTO sign permit. And so the next part B to that question, obviously, is has MTO granted their permission at this point? They have, yes. Uh, not for these three signs, because they haven't been granted a sign permit. So they, but it, chicken, where the egg or chicken, or correct, whichever sir, way you yes. want to put it. Okay. Um, with respect to the recommendation itself, I'm just curious, um, in light of what uh, Mr. Barry said about you know, wanting to bring these items to council, and give us the discretion over making these decisions. I just find it curious that the recommendation is approval um, is, as opposed to options. I don't have a problem with this application. I'm, I'm gonna vote in favor of it, but I'm just curious why, why the recommendation here is approval and not options to us uh, on, a, on a more um, neutral basis, especially since it's, it's technically in opposition of our bylaw. I uh, threw you. <coughs> Your Worship, uh, I believe with the uh, information and knowledge that I have with the Subaru back in 2004, I think we were looking at this as uh, the building was already approved the sign permit. Okay. Thus, yes, it was, it was BUDS and not TD. Um, and from my understanding that these signs have been placed uh, no higher, uh, and if higher, maybe a meter or two, than the ones that were granted under BUDS okay. uh, with a 2004 sign variance. That's a good answer. Thank you. I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> we may be getting to the end of this, possibly. Is your hand up for a question or? N no, to, to move the recommendation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I was you. looking for a motion. <laughs> may I call the vote? All in favor? Opposed, if any? Uh, that does carry it. It is closed, <coughs> but it carries. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Now, uh, we have the notice of intention to demolish 
at 153 Balsam. If you have questions, Diane Childs, the manager of policy, planning, and heritage, is here to take your questions. Otherwise, I need a motion. Councillor Giddings. Question to Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to move the staff for recommendations. Thank you. Any questions? In that case, may I put the vote to Councillor Giddings' motion? All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That was, uh, that's carried. We have no confidential discussion items. We do have the advisory committee minutes from the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee meeting of December 17th, and uh, we need to receive their minutes. Moved by Councillor Giddings. Are you ready to vote? All in favor? The minutes are received. Uh, if, if I could get one of you kind people to move that we rise and report to council. Councilor Grant, thank you. All those in favor? That's carried. I rise and report the Committee of the Whole has met and has made recommendations on consent items one and two, public hearing items three and four, discussion items five and six, and advisory committee minutes item seven is noted by the clerk. May I have a mover and seconder for my report? Councilor Longo and Councilor Palmer, thank you. All those in favor? And the report is adopted. Is there new business of an emergency, congratulatory, or condolence nature? I see none. Then it's time for consideration and, oh, Councilor Duddick, I see you now. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, express our uh, sincere condolences to former Councilor Keith Bird on the passing of his wife, Gail. I know many of us uh, were able to go and uh, say our uh, respects to them. Um, she was a lovely, lovely woman and she'll be missed. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very good and timely. Uh, a mover and seconder for the bylaws, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Elgar. All those in favor? The bylaws are adopted. Uh, thank you everybody for your contributions, your time and attention. It's been terrific working with you and we are now adjourned.